Uh, my name is Paul Ridker. I'm a cardiologist at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. And I have the wonderful honor of serving as the Eugene Brownwald Professor of Medicine at the Harvard Medical School. Uh, and my interests have been in inflammation and atherosclerosis for almost 30 years now. We showed over 25 years ago that in primary prevention, general outpatient people, uh, inflammation measured by the biomarker C-reactive protein that you know as high sensitivity CRP is a powerful predictor of risk along with LDL cholesterol. So this idea that inflammation and hyperlipidemia are both involved in the development of atherosclerosis is very well established at this point in time uh, for the general community. But in secondary prevention, and what I mean by that is patients with atherosclerosis who are all on a statin. That's a crucial group to be thinking about because here at these meetings, for example, we're hearing about a lot of new drugs that lower LDL cholesterol. We all agree that LDL cholesterol should be lowered as aggressively as we can. But once you're on a high intensity statin, and in my clinic, pretty much everybody is, we've always asked the question, well, is the incremental benefit of taking the LDL lower? Yes, it works, but it also is quite expensive. What about the incremental utility of the inflammation? But we didn't have an answer to that question. So I set up a collaboration with uh, two close colleagues of mine, uh, Steve Nissen, who had run the STRENGTH trial, uh, Deepak Bhatt, who had run the REDUCER trial, and my own research group had run uh, uh, the um, PROMINENT trial. These are all crucial in the sense that they're very contemporary. All three of these big 10,000 patient trials each published in the last two to three years. And most important, they're on guideline-directed therapy. So the crucial issue is these 31,245 patients we put together in one analysis all are taking wonderful background care and high intensity statins. And we asked one question, what's the predictor of their future cardiovascular events, cardiovascular deaths and all-cause mortality? Is it the LDL cholesterol, which is what our guidelines are based on, or is it the high sensitivity CRP, which we're not really addressing? So the three trials that we used to put together in this analysis of 31,245 patients, all on a statin and most on high intensity statin, participated in one of three contemporary recent clinical trials. The first one was prominent, our own research group's recent trial um, that was looking at patients. All three of these, by the way, are targeting triglycerides. We did that on purpose. We did not want to use trials that had targeted either CRP or LDL, because that would have biased the results. So we specifically picked three trials that had targeted triglyceride lowering. Prominent was with pemifibrate. That was a neutral trial. Strength was using um, a combination of fish oil, that was a neutral trial, and reduce it was a positive trial using icosapent ethyl. In the analysis that we did, we show that the three drugs have nothing to do with either the LDL levels or the CRP levels, or the relationships of either CRP or LDL to risk. But it gave us this wonderful opportunity, and the crucial thing is contemporary patients. So these are patients who we're all seeing right now, because these trials just finished in the last year or two. Um, and they're, again, they're on guideline-directed medical care. They're very aggressively treated, and the vast majority are on a high-intensity statin. So all these data begs the question, well, doctor, well, patient, after you're on a statin, should your next drug be another lipid-lowering drug? And again, we have lots of data that works. Or would you consider an anti-inflammatory drug? But my personal bias is I would do both. Uh, this is not a competition between the two. Uh, if we really want to beat this disease, we're going to have to address the fact that we need a lower cholesterol and we need a lower inflammation. And you can easily assign all these patients both of these directions to go. And that's where I think the future is going to be for cardiovascular care. Jump to the conclusions of the paper and it shows very strongly that, yes, there's a gradient of risk for LDL, but it's quite small. But for C-reactive protein, we just haven't even dealt with it yet. So risks are two and a half to threefold higher for patients with elevated CRP than they are for elevated LDL cholesterol. Now the complexity of this new data is it has a lot of implications for both clinical care and for research. We, we pre-specified three outcomes. Major adverse cardiovascular events, cardiovascular death, and all-cause mortality. What's remarkable is all three trials, independent of each other, gave the exact same result. So in the meta-analysis, you just got a smaller p-value. But what's, what's so incredible is these are global trials. And in each case, the results were identical. The CRP always outperformed the LDL. And for cardiovascular death and all-cause mortality, it's dramatically more important. So if my patient is being treated aggressively with a statin, that's great. And I'm worried about dying of cardiovascular disease. I've got to address the inflammation. 
That's the bottom line. On the clinical side, if you're not measuring high sensitivity CRP, to be frank, you don't know what you're treating. If your patient has what we call residual inflammatory risk, but you're not even measuring the biomarker, you don't know what their fundamental driver of their next heart attack is. So first of all, you've got to measure this biomarker. It'd be like trying to treat LDL without measuring the LDL, or trying to treat blood pressure without measuring blood pressure. I have no idea why doctors think they can just guess what the inflammation is without measuring it. That's number one. But number two, it begs the question, if the most important driver, once you're on a high intensity statin, is this inflammatory response, why aren't we doing a better job targeting that? Well, I'm a preventive cardiologist, so the first line of a target is diet, exercise, and smoking cessation, which all my patients should be doing anyway, but I think physicians don't really understand that these drugs are highly effective. I mean, these interventions are highly effective at lowering the CRP and at lowering cardiovascular risk. Second thing one could do is consider a drug like coltacine. Coltacine has been proven in two big outcome trials, Colcott and Lidoco 2. It's very inexpensive. It's very effective. 32% reduction in relative risk, which just to point out the obvious is twice the magnitude of risk reduction one gets with a PCSK9 inhibitor, which of course is very expensive and larger than we've seen with azetamide and other lipid-lowering drugs. But coltacine is widely underutilized. And I think that's because physicians and patients just don't know about it. There's no big pharmaceutical company talking about it. Um, so in my clinic, more and more patients are getting coltacine who have this residual inflammatory risk problem. A um, few caveats, I would not give it to patients with chronic kidney disease. It's a renally excreted drug. There's a few contraindications of therapies that are fairly infrequent, but the chronic kidney disease is a big one. Other ways of addressing inflammation are also out there. Uh, my research group is running a series of trials with some very novel uh, drugs that uh, modify interleukin-6. Most of your listeners are probably fami familiar with our Cantos trial from a few years ago. That was an interleukin-1 beta inhibitor. All of these cytokine inhibiting drugs target something called the central NLRP3 to IL-1 to IL-6 pathway that, of course, increases CRP, the biomarker we measure. Uh, so we have an ongoing trial with an IL-6 inhibitor in the setting of chronic kidney disease. That's crucial. Remember I just said that that's the group I would not give coltacine to, so that's very important. We have another one that's looking at HEFPEF, and we think we're going to launch one very soon looking at acute myocardial infarction. So it's a very exciting time in the field because uh, this new paper coming out here at these meetings um, is really describing for the clinical community, if we don't address inflammation, we're not going to beat this disease. And so that's where this is really at today.